at point one limit part one. So there are five things that we will be looking at part one, which is the definition of limit, notation, properties of limit, computation of limit, and limit of fractional function. Definition of limit. If the function fx approaches a single number l as x approaches a from either side, then the limit of fx as x approaches a is l and is written as the limit of fx as x approaches a is l. Next is notation. x approaches a with the sign positive means x approaches a from right x approaches a with the sign negative means x approaches a from left and last x approaches a without any signs means x approaches a from both sides properties of limit so the first properties of limit is limit c as x approaches a is equal to c properties to x power of n as x approaches a is equal to limit a power of n as x approaches a so the power will stay the same limit x as x approaches a is equal to a and limit limit c f x as x approaches a is equal to c limit f x as x approaches a properties 5 limit fx of gx as x approaches a is equal to limit fx as x approaches a over limit gx as x approaches a property 6 limit fx plus minus gx as x approaches a is equal to limit fx as x approaches a plus minus limit gx as x approaches a and the last properties limit fx times gx as x approaches a is equal to limit fx as x approaches a times limit gx as x approaches a computation of limit the limit of certain function may be evaluated by substituting x equal to a in fx such as that limit fx as x approaches a is equal to fa last for part one is limit of fractional function there are two methods to find limit of fractional function which is factorization method and multiplication of conjugate we use these two methods if we substitute the value of x but but we got zero over zero which means undefined Therefore, these two methods will be used. First method, factorization method. Limit x power of 2 minus 1 over x plus 1 as x approaches negative 1. We can simplify limit x power of 2 minus 1 over x plus 1 as x approaches negative 1 by factoring x power of 2 minus 1. If we factorize x power of 2 minus 1, we get x plus 1 and x minus 1. Therefore, we get x plus 1 in the numerator and denominator. Then we cancel out, substitute the value, and then we get negative 2. Next, the multiplication of conjugate. First, we will multiply the conjugate of the numerator. So, we only explain the sides that contain this and its conjugate only. Next, um, the, the, the denominator does not have to be explained. Substitute the value of x, then we get negative 1 over 2. In 8.1, we need to find one-sided limit. There are two types of one-sided limits, which are left-hand limit and right-hand limit. We use x approaches a minus to indicate x approaches a from the left side. And we use x approaches a plus to indicate x approaches a from the right side. Next subtopic is test for existence of a limit. Limit exists if both one-sided limit exists and equal. 
This means the limit will exist if limit x approaches a from the left has the same constant as the limit x approaches a from the right. Hence, the limit x approaches a will be equal to the constant. Next, we have infinite limits with two conditions. If the function fx increases without bound as x approaches a, then limit x approaches a fx will equal to positive infinity. Second condition, if the function fx decreases without bound as x approaches a, then limit x approaches a fx will equal to negative infinity. Next, we have limits at infinity. Limit x approaches plus minus infinity with fx, 1 over x to the power of n will equal to 0. With the condition, n have to be positive integers. Last subtopic for 8.1 is limit at infinity for rational function. If limit x approaches plus minus infinity, fx over gx is equal to infinity over infinity, then we will have to divide or factorize each term to the highest power of the denominator. Looking at the question that is given in the example, the highest power of the denominator is x square. Hence, we will need to factorize x square to each term of the question. That's all for 8.1. Then we will need to continue to 8.2. 8.2 asymptote. In this subtopic, we will learn about two asymptotes which are vertical asymptote and horizontal asymptote. First, let's look on vertical asymptote. In vertical asymptote, we will apply method 6, which is infinite limit. A line x equal to a is a vertical asymptote of functions if either limit x approaches a from right fx equals to plus minus infinity or limit x approaches a from left of a function equals to plus or minus infinity. There are several steps to find vertical asymptote. 1. Make sure that the function is in simplim simplified form. 2. Find the values of x that causes the denominator to be 0. 3. If x equal to a causes the denominator to be 0, then check whether both limit approaches a from left and right approaching infinity. And the last one is, x equal to a is the vertical asymptote. For example, the function is x over 4 minus x to the power of 2. To determine the vertical asymptote, we set the denominator to be 0. So, we know that the x will be 2 or negative 2. And we apply the method 6 which is infinite limit and therefore we, can, we know that x equal to 2 and x equal to negative 2 are vertical asymptote. Moving on, for horizontal asymptote, we apply method 7 which is limit and infinity and method 8, limit and infinity for rational functions. For method 8, we divide each term by x to the highest power of the denominator or we factorize the highest power. A line y equal to b is horizontal asymptote of functions if either limit x approaches positive infinity of a function is equal to b or limit x approaches negative infinity of a function is equal to b. For example, find the horizontal asymptote for fx equals to x over 4 minus x to the power of 2. 
so we apply method 7 and method 8 and therefore we can know that y equal to 0 is the horizontal asymptote in this chapter we're going to learn continuity in subtopic 8.3 continuity is a function y equal to fx that can be graphed throughout its domain with one continuous motion a function fx is considered to be continuous at x equal to a if limit x approaching a fx exists next fa is defined and limit x approaching a fx equal to fa the graph below shows the function is continuous at x equal to a Continuity at an interior point, a function y equal to fx is continuous at an interior point c of its domain if limit x approaching c fx equal to fc. While continuity at an endpoint, a function y equal to fx is, is continuous at a right endpoint a of its domain if limit x approaching a from positive side fx equal to fa. A function y equal to fx is continuous at a left endpoint b of its domain if limit x approaching b from the left side fx equal to fb. The graph shows continuity at points a, b, and c. Firstly, limit x approaching 2 fx is defined because the value is 6. f2 is 6, so the limit x approaching 2 fx is equal to f2, whereas the value is 6. So f is continuous at x equal to 2. 